xm is a negative value. And according to my explanation before, when this is true, that means when fxl times fxm is less than zero, it just simply means the new logo bound is the same like before, which means remain zero. But the new upper bound now is different. The new upper bound now will have the value of x sub m, which is 0 0.066. So here is a new lower bound, which is the same thing as before. Here's a new upper bound, which is different from before. Now, once you know the new lower bound, upper bound, the procedure again is repeated. So we go to iteration 2 and we calculate the next predicted root x sub m again using the same formula. The only thing different is now for x upper bound we have to use the new value which is 0 0.066. So based on that the x sub m new predicted root is equal to 0 0.0611. Again, once you calculate that, the next thing we say is, what is the function at x sub m? Well, we know x sub m is equal to 0 0.0611. So the function at x sub m is, you just go back to the cubic equation. Whenever you see x, you replace by the new x sub m, which is 0 0.0611. Whenever you see x, you replace by 0 0.0611. So, fxm will turn out to be a positive value. Then after that, just like before, in the previous iteration, we want to find out what happened to this product, fxl times fxm. Well, fxl means f at 0. And uh, fxm, it means the function at 0.0611. Based on our calculation, we know the function at 0 is positive. And the function at 0.0611 is also positive. And therefore, the product will be positive. Now, the story is slightly different than before because this product fxl times fxm that product now is positive not negative anymore what does that mean that means the new the new x sub l will be different from the previous lower bound but the new upper bound is the same thing as the previous upper bound. So this is the new pair of lower bound and upper bound. After that, we calculate the relative absolute error norm, which is based on this value, 0 0.0611, represent the current estimated root, subtract 0 0.0660 represent the predicted root in the previous iteration divide by the current predicted root and then we multiply by 100 so now we got 8% error okay and again the procedure is repeated I don't want to waste the time now we have the uh, new x upper bound which is 0 0.066 the new lower bound x sub l is 0 0.0611 and therefore the new predicted root x sub m is equal to 0 0.0624 after we just calculate the new predicted root which is x sub m we want to calculate what is the function value at x sub m. For doing that, 
we find out the answer is minus 1.1313 times 10 minus 7. And then finally, we do the same check. What happened to the product FXL times FXM? Well, FXL means F evaluated at 0 0.0611. FXM means F evaluated at XM, which is equal to 0 0.0624. This function is positive. The other function is negative. So the product is negative. Again, when the product is negative, it means the new x sub l is the same thing as the x sub l of the previous iteration. And the new x sub u will be equal to the new value, not the same thing as the previous x sub u. And then we calculate the uh, absolute relative error norm again. Now we got 2.05% error. And so the procedure is repeated until, let's say, by the time you get to four iteration, iteration number four, we will find out that at that iteration four, the new lower bound is 0 0.0611. The new upper bound is 0 0.0624. The predicted root, the newest predicted root, is this value right here. 0.0632377619 and the absolute relative error norm is 0.02%. How do we get this number? Well, again, this number 0.02% basically is equal to the current predicted root, which is this value, subtract the previous predicted root, which is this value, and then divide by the current predicted root, which is this value. When we do that, you will get 0.02%. Okay? And since this value is already small enough compared to the specified error tolerance, then we say we stop the process. And by the way, corresponding to the final root, which is this value, the function evaluated at this predicted root is equal to negative 3.347 times 10 to the power minus 10. So as you can see, this value is essentially equal to zero. And that's why this is the final uh, root of the nonlinear equation. OK, assuming you got the final answer already, which basically say the relative error norm is 0.02%, and the uh, final predicted root, x sub m equal to 0 0.0632377. The question becomes, in this answer, how many significant digits that we can trust? Well, to answer that question, in the other chapter, we already developed a, a formula which basically say the number of significant digits that we can trust, let's call it m has to satisfy this inequality. So now just plug in the number. The relative error norm, epsilon a, is 0.02%, as we already saw it in the previous slide. And the right-hand side is still the same. And if we multiply both sides by 2, then 0.02 becomes 0.04, and 0.5 you times 2 become 1. And that's why all you see on the right-hand side is just this 10 raised to the power 2 minus m. After that, we take the log of both sides, like this. So uh, log of 0.04 will be less than log of 10 raised to the power of 2 minus m. And we all know that log of 10 raised to the power of 2 minus m is the same thing as this guy. So from that equation, we can solve for m. OK, we can solve for m. 
and eventually you will get m is less than or equal to 3.3979. So if you route it off to the nearest integer, it will be m is about 3, which means there is three significant figure, at least, at least there are three significant figure that you can have a confidence in your answer using the fall position method. At least three significant you can trust from your final answer of the fall position iterative method. Thank you. And that is the end of the lecture. Okay, that's the end of the lecture. Uh, acknowledgement.